long-term goals for her float wheel. Your biggest competitor. In Chinese, there's a saying, 有伤. As wide as you need it, and oh, that yeah. you would have the ultimate nose clearance. This is the board I write every day now. Sharpie that you drew the V on. <laughs> Makes uh, hangers for, uh, you know, Victoria's Secret and stuff like that. Hmm. I'm really trying to decide. Sorry, my cat is, uh... <laughs> the high voltage one is going to be higher than the okay. GTS. Okay. And uh, it's going to be super light. I think you have a doppelganger. Danny Flo, who's Danny Look up Flo? Danny Oh. <laughs> okay. I mean, the hair... How does it feel, Tony, to have the biggest balls FM has never seen? Ah, oh, I'm not sure about this. Sit down, people. One eternity late. All right, what's going on, everyone? This is Max. Welcome back to the channel. I've got a super special guest here today, Mr. Tony Tran of Float Wheel, the man shrouded in mystery. We're very excited to learn a little more about you personally, about your business Float Wheel, some of your goals with it, your favorite boba, and uh -huh. yes, we'll, we'll just dive right in. And we have some great community questions that I will, yeah, that will hit at the end. Love to learn more about you. Oh, thanks for having me, Max. I'm also gonna uh, talk about really interesting uh, histories of the uh, flow wheel uh, business. Let's get right into it. To kick things off, what exactly is your um, writing background and how did that transition into first the DIY or project, more like a pint size uh, yes. platform? Yeah, share, share with us about that. Okay, so I did not get into the PEV thing uh, with a one wheel or anything like that. I actually started way back in 20s, uh, 2016, and I started with a boosty board, V2. And uh, at the moment, I was really uh, interested in the idea that you can use a small size battery and uh, some small size uh, motors, BLDC motors, and then can power you up to like... Uh, for small trips around the city. I'm really into this and I use the boosty board to commute in the campus, right? So later as I evolve in that uh, category and uh, I naturally look into something that's more exciting. So I went into the, the Champa boards. I don't know if you know it. It's those, those uh, electric off boards, right? Yeah, those off-road uh, escape boards. And uh, me and John was in the college, and we were writing our essays about this PEV industry. And uh, we really dive into it. And uh, later, uh, we actually developed a board that's similar to the Trampa, Trampa board. And uh, yeah, uh, after testing the, the samples we made, uh, it was not for us. I, I feel like this platform is not for me. And at, at that moment, uh, we started to notice the one wheel form factor. So I think the one wheel form factor is a lot better for me because I cannot carry a board as heavy as a trampa. And um, mm. we started uh, by we started off by buying a few aluminum extrusions uh, profiles and uh, just put it on the ground. And we bought some hub motors from the from P Hub. I remember. And I just put the hub inside the aluminum rails, and and I, I told John this could work, and uh, we just at this moment um, I believe is Mitch Lustig dropped his video about uh, how you can implement the VASC into your one wheel a one wheel kind of board, and um, that's how I I got the idea to follow uh, Mitch Lustig, and uh, we develop a really uh. uh shabby platform that that <laughs> that kick off our business and um the first board i wrote is not actually a one wheel it's actually the board we make ourselves and uh, we didn't have enough found to afford a one wheel actually until okay. we sold like 10 kids to many dudes in canada and uh, australia and all all sorts of places and um uh, we saw the potential of selling this this kids and uh, we started with the, and we moved on the next year. 
and we built the flow wheel pint, <laughs> which is right. the right. which is the kit that uses some of the one wheel pint uh, parts, and you can build it uh, follow our instructions. And uh, later, about one year later, we got a little bit more funds, so we do all the uh, modes and uh, research and development, and we. Um, I think it's about one year after the One Wheel GT is launched. Uh, we launched the Flow Wheel ADV, and uh, that got us so far right now. That's my uh, history. Wow, that's pretty fascinating. So you started with Boosted, realized yeah. that the that platform with the remote, I guess, and yeah. the limitations of the four smaller wheels just wasn't enough for you, and then you built your own. Like, how did that look? Oh, I'm going to share some pictures later to you so you can put it in the videos. We basically took the side wheels of the One Wheel XR and uh, we sized it down according to the motor we have because the motor we have was like 10 inch, was like a pan motor, and we sized it okay. down so it was, a, it was like a small XR. And um, the foot pads, you know, were actually made with plywood. And uh, uh, for the very first board, we, we, we started to have this concave footpath because, you know, my dad runs a CNC uh, wood shop uh, that makes uh, hangers for, you know, Victoria's Secret and stuff like that. And um, wow. we okay. used his machine. We used his machine. We bought some plywood on the internet and we designed the, the footpath to be like concave. And I remember loading up uh, the... I remember loading up a huge plywood onto the CNC machine and uh, have it carve out the footpath for us. And uh, <laughs> it was a really uh, hard time at the moment because uh, we ha had to do everything ourselves. And uh, there is no fun backing us other than, you know, my mom giving me some kind of money for, like, <laughs> stay alive. Right. And that's how it started. Nice. Wow. So, okay, You're the, the heritage of Float Wheel goes back to uh, its roots shared with some Victoria's Secret lingerie. <laughs> Dude, that's amazing. Humble beginnings. On to Float Wheel now. You mentioned John, right? And I think you've yeah. brought him up a few times, but we've never like yeah. seen of this person. Who exactly is he? I wasn't sure if he's a business partner or maybe your alter ego. John is actually my classmate back in, uh, back into, uh, back, uh, back in the college and uh, we, we started the project together in 2018. We started bo uh, building uh, copies of Boosty Board back then and okay. uh, when, we, when we were kids and uh, he's with me uh, all, all the way till now and uh, now John is, John is a very low-key person. He does not like to be uh, in front of a camera, and uh, he likes to be, you know, the, the the ultimate boss that's behind the cameras, and uh, he's he's amazing. Without John, we will not be here. And uh, John is actually taking care of every single board's logistics uh, from every single bolts, screws. John is gonna purchase that, and uh, for every uh, hardware development, that that's John. Uh, for a product design, that's also John, and um, wow. he basically is behind uh, all this hard work, and uh, I'm just here, you know, making some content for you guys, and uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm just, you know... You're the um, influencer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm kind of like, I'm kind of like Jack in FM. <laughs> okay, yeah, marketing, I gotcha. Yeah. Okay, I did not know that. I did hear of his name dropped a few times. Wasn't sure of uh, who exactly he was, but he sounds very involved, um, down yeah. to every bolt you said. So he's yes. an integral part of the business. But it's just you and him, essentially? Yeah, it's just two of us. And uh, also my girlfriend and his girlfriend. <laughs> we all quit okay. our jobs okay. to work on Flow Wheel. Yeah, I noticed your uh, girlfriend is your main videographer. She's your... Yeah, uh, she's right taking all that. She is right uh, behind the camera right now, and uh, she takes care a lot of stuff like customer support, uh, those easy stuff mm. like you are missing some parts from us. Uh, that's my girlfriend replying to you, and uh, if you are having some really serious problems with your board, that will be me answering the customer support. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and nice. John's girlfriend is taking care of some of the small parts shipping. Like, uh, if you need a fender. Uh, she's probably going to pack it for you and then ship it for you. 
yeah, that's basically how it works here in the flow wheel. Wow, so just the four of you, two couples handling all the orders and taking care of everybody. That is super impressive. Uh, <laughs> thanks a lot, uh, but um, it's our job. We, we do it here. <laughs> I think it's a true testament of your passion um, to really push through, you know, especially on difficult days and when, you know, you were uh, having the, the first day issues, but you were still there responding to everybody, making sure everyone's Gen 2 plastics were getting, you know, uh, sent over, following up. So, um, yeah, I think the community, you know, really uh, appreciates that. Your, some may even call you a, a freedom fighter in our uh, one-wheeled world, you know? So keep, keep pushing, man. We love it. Thanks a lot. I love freedom. Going back to some more uh, personal, I noticed that you, you're a big fan of Bugs Bunny. What, what's the story oh. behind that? You have so many different shirts of it. Oh, yeah. I, I really like how sneaky Bugs Bunny is, and I really, <laughs> I really like the vibe he, he is bringing like the this kind of little cartoon baddies i really like the vibe just a little sneaky but very cunning and clever and always oh, yeah. like smarting like the that. tasmanian right <laughs> yeah like it <laughs> okay to me and i think to a lot of people you are a visionary in our space especially the electrical components you're always looking ahead to see how we can make improvements uh make it compatible with existing platforms you know exciting yeah. developments you have working or going on right now. Where did you get your, I guess, um, electrical wizardry? Like, what, what's your background on that? Uh, I use, uh, actually, I'm not majored in uh, electric engineering. I, I was majored in material science and uh, engineering. So, hmm. and John was not uh, majored in this as well. John was ma majored in some nuclear power or something like that. And, um, uh, and I usually, uh, I watch a lot of YouTube videos, uh, and I watch a lot of teardowns. I, and I find some, uh, you know, clues in there. And I also learned uh, RTM designer myself. And uh, I have a few friends that helps me design uh, the electric stuff. I know it's not good because I'm a total noob on this. And um, yeah, basically, I watch a lot of teardowns, and I learn from it. And uh, I watch a lot of... Uh, Endless Sapphire, and uh, there's a lot of great en uh, engineers on there sharing some of the, their designs, and uh, I just learned from it. Sorry, what was that last site you named? Oh, Endless Sapphire. Endless Sapphire. Never heard of that. Endless Sapphire. Uh, basically, it is an engineering site uh, that's engineers sharing some of their designs. Basically, fun open source sites. Nice. So you are self-taught, truly DIY yeah. on YouTube. Yeah, just basically a DIY. But um, I'm really glad we got it working, and a lot of people are writing it right now. I know. It just goes to show that as long as you utilize the proper knowledge correctly and efficiently, I mean, you don't need to go to college, kids. I mean, just go to YouTube. Be better education out there now. I notice, like, on a lot of your videos... Mm -hmm. When you're responding to people and just making comments and stuff, you have very good English slang. Like, you have a great really? grasp of the English pop culture. Um, okay. Yes. Like, how did you, how did you uh, get up so up to date on that? Like, you're just on top of things. I watch a lot of memes and... Um, oh. uh, <laughs> And I watch a lot of YouTube, and I usually learn it from the YouTube videos. Like a lot, of, a lot of community members make a lot of videos. Like I watch every TFL videos, and I watch every basically every one wheel videos that's online. And I watch a lot of memes. Like I follow Elon Musk, so I know know the memes. <laughs> <laughs> so you're familiar with some light trolling here and there. Yeah. I like I like the idea of trolling. <laughs> <clears throat> yes, trolling is an art. I think that uh, every one wheeler in in this community should be familiar with. It's a great skill to have. Yeah, like if you can make people laugh and it's all funny, <laughs> <laughs> like troll all you want. <laughs> awesome. What's one of your favorite memes? There are plenty, but there isn't one like my favorite. What's your favorite one, though? <laughs> oh, 
Well, I think the classic in our space is the guy chilling with the coffee mug, sitting at a oh. table, just oh, with the sign okay. like like come at me with whatever you got. You know, I'll have an answer <laughs> for you. And I yeah, think that's just universal. That. It just applies to any situation. <laughs> yeah. Prove me wrong. Okay. Yeah, I think that's... Prove me wrong. Jump back to some business stuff. What are some of your short and long term goals for Float Wheel? Okay, short term. Uh, for short term goals, is that we need to get a V two system out there as soon as possible, and um, we need to uh, give people more options about boards. So that that's our that's our mid term goals, I believe. That's offering people with uh, more uh, more form factors. Like we need to have some mini boards. We need to have some trick boards. Uh, that's gonna be my mid term goals. And for my long term goals, I I just want, I just want to keep uh, supporting this Basque uh, community, and uh, um, I really want to make everybody get on the Basque. You know, it's really good. <laughs> that's that's gonna be the, my long term goal here. Yeah, man, Basque is life changing, and I think you are the one really helping to lower the barrier of entry. I mean, you're literally the one to help provide all the parts already sourced and tested. And at a very very fair price, uh, for a high performance, fully assembled board. So I think you are absolutely doing the right things. And now you're going to help people with the um, the Gen Two electronics to use old platforms of either XR GT. So yeah. instead of you know uh, turning into e waste like you said before, it's going to revive yeah. a lot of uh, parts. Yeah, it's so. such a pity that a lot of XRs are lying uh, way, uh, part out or uh, something like that. It's just mm -hmm. uh, really a lot of e-waste. And uh, because, you know, it's such a pity that XR, pe actually people are really loving this platform, uh, especially the XR. So I told Robert, uh, I, told Robert I actually uh, talk, about, uh, talk a lot with Robert about product designing, product uh, developing. And uh, he is really a fan of the XR platform, and uh, he 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 expect, uh, he told me, and I quote him, the GT platform sucks, <laughs> and he told me do not develop any board that's like a GT. You know, the ADV is kind of like a GT, right? It's got more cells, a little bit more cells, uh, and uh, same heavy, and uh, something like that. They are really into the XR platform, and I think with the XR kit and the GTV kit and the Pine V kit, we are gonna bring life to a lot of um, those dead one wheels, and people are going to enjoy them. And also, it's gonna be a huge improvement over the stock one wheels, because we have mm. tested on the dyno here. The, the GT was able to do like 2,500 watts, and with right. the GTV kit, it was able to do 4,400 exactly. And um, with, with the TFL motor, with, with the TFL uh, hub, uh, with the battery magnet, I think we can push even higher, higher numbers, like to 6,000 watts with the TFL hub. And, higher uh, than GTS? Higher than GTS. It's already GTS? higher than GTS. GTS. Right. Oh, yeah, because GTS uh, is like 4 or 5? 3,800 watts <clears throat> for GTS. Stock. Wow, almost twice as much. Oh, yeah, it's going to be a lot. Than the GTS, I, I don't know, I don't know why they designed the GTS uh, as is because there's plenty of uh, plenty of power left it in in that motor to to be squeezed out, you know. Right. Just uh, a little side note, like you know, GTS I think has its uh, has its demographics. A definitely legitimate product, but it just should not be at that price. But anyway, glad that you're offering well, not only you but also TFL. You guys both offer your products at fair value prices. Talk to us more about this lighter trick board. I know that's, uh, that is, is it that along with the Gen 2 electronics that's kind of your priorities right now? Oh, uh, we, I think the, the lighter board is gonna come later than the V2, like a lot later, like uh, several okay. months later. Okay. And uh, our main focus right now is still to develop the uh, V2 BMS and ESC combo. Um, but um, Parallel, we are also designing that product. Actually, we just um, sam 
we just send the design files to the motor factory and we are asking them to make the sample motors for us right now. So the new lighter board will now be focusing on like the ultimate range, the ultimate torque. That's gonna be the ADV's job, right? So the, the, the new board is going to be like something uh, similar in configuration to the GTS, like a really high voltage one. It's gonna be higher than the okay. GTS. Okay. And uh, it's gonna be super light. It's gonna be lighter than the GTS as well. So we <laughs> oh, awesome. So and um, our thinking is that we want to make it to support as much parts uh, that fits into the XR as possible. So we want to fit every aftermarket uh, foot pads of XR to the new product and uh, every new bumper and uh, including band bumpers. We want it to be like. Uh, gonna be compatible with all the XR parts and uh, it's gonna be light it's gonna be similar to the XR weight but you know have a lot more performance than the XR that's basically what we want with that board and Ooh. but um, in, in terms of torque and uh, power output you know because it was a, sing, a single P battery like 30 something S 1P so the current won't be high, so it will not be as torquey as the ADV, but uh, it will outperform the GTS for sure. Uh, that's basically our vision of for the, the lighter board. It's something between the GTS and the ADV, so, something like that. Dude, that's going to be a great sweet spot to fill. Because yeah, ADV, yeah. I got it right here, is the freaking ultimate trail beast board. It's it's my go-to board now. It, it's just got it all. It's got the smoothness, it's got the torque, the range, the ease of fixing, especially people overseas, is a, is a huge part. Convenience to, to get parts to for any maintenance and stuff like that. Yeah, not only for convenience, uh, say, but uh, we also offer them usually at no cost. <laughs> With some customers came up, came to us with you know my my board is not working and uh, immediately we know it's water damaged and still we offer the parts for free cover them in in the we cover a lot of we, we cover ninety percent of the warranty stuff like under warranty uh, we don't need the customers to pay or, or we only require the customer to pay a little bit uh, of shipping fees and the cost mm -hmm. of manufacturing and uh, we usually don't. Uh, not only we offer them at convenience, we offer them at uh, at an unbeatable price. Absolutely. I've heard plenty of stories from that, and people are so um, pleased with that type of service. It's unparalleled. Now, question yeah. on that, is that sustainable? Do you foresee yourself doing that for for forever, or just kind of sort of this time where you're onboarding new riders sort of thing to ease them in? Oh. People will think that uh, it's only get started, that uh, we are trying to be all good and stuff. But um, what I can assure you is that it's going to be always like this. And um, it's very sustainable. It, the profit is um, good enough for for us to support customers at, at manufacturing cost. Like, we, we do not need to make money, make extra money on, uh, like, supporting the, the current wheels, like FM does. And mm -hmm. um, we can actually keep doing this. And... Uh, it's not at our loss. It's not at our loss. It's still highly profitable and uh, sustainable. Yeah, don't worry okay. about it. That's a relief. And last thing on the lighter board, it's going to be compatible. I think it will be with growler size rails, just like shorter size rails. Yes. Complaints about the XR is still, the, the board is still too long for my liking. And it, I usually uh, run into the, uh, uh, like say, run into the heels too quickly. The nose touch the ground too, too often for me. Like I want it to be shorter as well, because you know with the ADV we uh, we were able to make it more compact than the GT. You will notice the ADV touching the ground less than the uh, GT uh, GTS does, and uh, that's our goal with the lighter board as well. We want it okay. to be short and compact, and uh, there's a lot of uh, useless uh, length on on the end of the uh, XR, and we want to eliminate eliminate that. Yeah, that's interesting uh, you bring that up because just a quick note, I remember hearing, I think, Nico and Jeff talking about this on one of their podcasts uh, last year, is mm -hmm. what if you made the ultimate shortest board where the foot pads were like literally just as wide as you need it and oh, that yeah. you would have the ultimate nose clearance and oh, yeah. I think you could, and then you could really lean into it without worrying about tipping the fulcrum point as much, right? 
Do you think that's something that's actually viable in a, in a production board? Or what, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, I actually saw this idea. Like people were a PS uh, were photoshopping uh, XR to be uh, what you are describing a, a nugget, a nugget one wheel, and yeah. uh, I I think it's possible as long as we move the controller inside the motor, right? Ah. So we have the batteries on both sides, so uh, it's gonna be front 10s1p and the rear 10s1p, and we can actually make an ultimate short XR. But um, but thinking about this idea. Is that when you nose dive, you're gonna even nose dive even <laughs> further. <laughs> the angle is gonna be even right. Cool. There's no nose dragging to save it. It's oh yeah, literally do or die. Yeah. It's... Are there any new developments on Gen two? Hmm. New developments. Um. The Gen two is um, basically the same platform as the ADB. So, uh, other than the ESC and uh, the BMS and the, the front box lead. There is not gonna be any more developments on the ADV, the uh, ADV two, and uh, okay. that's basically it. Yeah. Okay. Are you planning any U.S. events? Oh, I don't know for U.S. event. I don't. I don't even know where I can go there. <laughs> um, but um, for events of flow wheel, I think we can actually do like. Uh, there is. Uh, there is an event going on uh, on Europe, actually, and uh, I have some information here. There's going to be a Europe uh, race, like Balaton Karika 24, uh, which is the Hungarian EOL event, uh, and people are going to be able to demo flow wheels over there, and um, uh, try out just try out flow wheels. We have uh, we have Gerdo uh, taking a new ADV there for people to try out. So okay. if you want to try out uh, flow wheel ADV on the event, you can go to uh, Hungarian EOL. So you can you will be able to try out the ADV there. Currently, I have like Australia visa right now, but uh, I don't have any other visa. I might try to apply for it and uh, maybe you know do some group rides over there. In the that would be great. Hell yeah, I, I'll be your host, man. So whatever you need, let me know. We need to go yeah. up to uh, the Float Life in Sacramento. They're about an hour and a half away. Oh, yeah. So either there, here, we'd love to have you here, man. So hopefully that happens. We need, we need to go to that mountain as well. <laughs> oh, the hill. Yeah. Yes! Yeah. Team Float Wheel, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That is about 10 minutes away from here. Oh, that's and, great. Uh, yes, we definitely need to uh, to make a trip out there. That's actually going to be an official race course uh, for this summer, for the underground oh, that's cool. season. Uphill, downhill, and then literally two minutes away from that is the 2022 ORL Western Regional Race that what? One Wheel hosted. It's that close? Yeah, it's, it's in the same park. It's float wheel, DIY basque, any future motion boards. Go at it, you know. So it's gonna be a fun, fun time during the summer. Definitely. Maybe not U.S. Maybe Taiwan. Oh, Taiwan is always my has always been my dream place to go. Like I have a lot of friends in the manufacturing business. They are actually from Taiwan, and um, I really like I really like Taiwan for being like it's a very unique uh, place in in Asia. I'd really love to visit Taiwan sometime. Who is your biggest competitor? Would you say Future Motion or the DIY Vesk scene? Huh. Currently, I think, uh, uh, in the past, we, we thought, you know, we have to compete with Fungineers. But now, like, I, I, I think it's more like Flow Wheel plus Fungineers against FM. <laughs> That's my uh, thought here. And um, really, I think... Used uh, in the past, we were not comparable with FM products, but for now, uh, after the V2 system is out, I, I really don't think there is any FM stock boards that, that's able to provide such a good ride. So you guys aren't competitors, but more as uh, how would you categorize that the, the hmm. dynamic? In in Chinese, there's a saying "yo shang." There's like friendly uh, competitors, uh, vendors. <laughs> Okay. 
uh, I wish all the best for Fungineers, and I hope him. I, I wish him success, and uh, I'm really excited for their products as well. And uh, I think we are not really that compa competitive uh, against each other. Uh, I think the the only threat to the rest of the community is FM. Like that, that's for sure. In terms of supporting open source, the direction where it's going, it's embracing innovation, embracing uh, competition. Like the, the way how you put it right now is the ultimate way to see a, a friendly rival or friendly uh, colleague almost. It's almost like float life and craft and ride sort of thing, right? Yeah, There's... like we need this kind of good vibe here in the community, right? It's not like we need a... Uh... Like we need a, a, a dude here swing everybody. That that's not what we want. It's it's exactly uh same the same uh, in the EUC or in the Eastgate uh Eastgate community. Like uh, the all the Eastgate boss are like friend to each other. Right. And they usually gather up, you know, uh, discussing products and uh, something like that. And uh, for EUC as well, I I believe I know all all of the EUC bosses and. Uh, EUC company buses, and they are like friends together. They usually go out there and ride together. I mean, that's the kind of vibe we want here for the community, right? And right. I think that also um, breeds for innovation. And um, yeah, that's basically it. Yeah, I love that vibe. Hopefully we can get to that point one day. We'll see. At least have you and Jack ride together. That'd be interesting. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, uh, having Kyle and Jack here, having Kyle robots, and Jack, would be amazing. I know. Have your own little group ride. That'd be interesting. Yeah. The amount of innovation that can come out from that would be amazing. But I almost feel like you would be elevating them at this point. You know, design wise, I I think uh, I, they have their goods about it. They, they uh, we have our goods about our design. This is definitely not about against one or another. I think uh, yeah. FM has absolutely its proper place in our community, especially for the newer riders that uh, don't want to deal with assembly. They want to plug and yes. play. They don't yes. want to deal with any settings adjustments that could possibly throw them off the board. So safety and all that. Um, yes. You want the easiest solution. FM is always going to be there. And I, I think they should yeah. be. Where do you start with FM wheels? And ultimately, if you want more torque, you want the ultimate torque and ultimate performance, and you are willing to, you know, tinker, and uh, you go, uh, you go to the ultimate end, which is low wheel and engineer products. I think that's a way to describe it. Yeah, definitely. Pretty much covered almost everything here. Um, let's see. Sorry, my cat is uh, is whining <laughs> right now. <laughs> she wants a treat. Your your cat uh, is waking up my cat as well. <laughs> <She's coming laughs> no, here. really. <laughs> check out where is that noise oh let, let me show you my kitty yeah let's do a kitty a little kitty uh let's end it right here, here. <laughs> well it's my kitty here <laughs> say hi say hi <laughs> oh it's a chinese kitty. all right oh yours is adorable it's orange orange and white and black yeah it's an orange kitty it's a stray cat we we got uh from the streets Dude, same as me. This guy showed up at my garage one night at 2 a.m. while I was on my computer. Okay, so I got, I think, two more here for you, and then we'll just finish with the community. Uh, you're oh. okay on time? Totally. I'm free. All right. Awesome. Obviously, there's been a little bit um, downtime with the website from time to time. Is it going to be for sure the domain floatwheels.ru moving forward? Yeah, it's going to be floatwheel S. Thought are you moving forward? And, flow uh, wheels. My, yeah. Yeah. Flow wheels. Thought are you? Yeah. And my email is gonna be like uh, Tony Flow Wheel at Gmail dot com. Yeah. Okay. So that's gonna stay the same. Awesome. So in case you see the website's down, um, there's always a way to reach Tony from his Gmail address that I'll put up there. Um, yes. Before the website is back. So good to know. But the site is uh, actually back now. Sites back now? Awesome. Alternative payments or sticking with Bitcoin? Um, basically USDC, USDT now, but uh, I don't know. Maybe moving forward, uh, it's going to be something else. I don't know. I, I cannot uh, comment on that.
a tutorial on how to buy a front wheel with USDT or USDC crypto. In order to buy a front wheel with cryptocurrencies, there are five main steps. Step one. What do you do when you're not building float wheels? Oh, when I'm not building float wheels. I used to snowboard a lot. You know, there is a, there is a indoor snow, snowboard uh, uh, place here in Guangzhou. And I usually go there snowboarding. But after, after long, I launched the ADV, I haven't go there once. Like it's always building flow wheels and the building, like aftermarket support for one wheels. It has always been this way. And I, I uh, fix my cars, modify my cars from time to time. And uh, okay. but it's mainly building flow wheels. Gotcha. Yeah, this is your baby now. Yeah. Before I move on to the community, are, do you have any, I guess, questions for us? How can we help you? Hmm. I'm really trying to decide, like, is the pint small enough? I kind of want, I kind of think the pint is still too big for me if I want to travel with it. Like, is there a need, like, for a smaller board than the pint? Like, having the GT kind of performance and uh, have, like, eight or nine kilograms of weight and uh, be able to carry it on the on the airplane because a lot of people are suggest against this idea because you know nobody's gonna buy this kind of product it's not like uh, fm is already having problems selling the pint and uh, if you are building a smaller wheel than the pint and uh, it's, not, it's not gonna sell very good and i'm really trying to get help from this question like is there a need for a smaller pint yeah, comment so down kinda, Yeah, yeah, definitely. Drop, let us know. And I think that kind of goes in that direction of those smaller foot pad board sort of thing. Yeah. Almost like a, po a true pocket board that yeah. is travel friendly, gives you ultimate nose clearance, lightest. Yeah, I'd definitely be interested in that because that's filling, I think, a, a nice missing piece, a nice missing yeah. uh, niche of the market. But just yeah, like you said, how big is that market? We'll have to see. Oh, yeah. Because when you are looking at the boosty board, I used to travel, I used to fly around with my boosty board. Uh, and the boosty board is really light, like 7 kilograms or 8 kilograms. And the pint is still very heavy. The pint is like 13, uh, like like 11 or uh, pint is something like 12 kilograms. That's still, and we still need to cut off like uh, 4 kilograms of the pint. So that's why I want to make it smaller. Like we make a, a smaller wheel than the pint. I think that would be a really good board to uh, ride in the airport. Like I used to get off the plane and uh, ride my ex ride my boosty board out the export. And everybody's walking. I'm just riding <laughs> my boosty board. And everybody look look at you. That that makes you feel really good. I, I, I think. Yeah, I think that'd be a very interesting question um, to answer. Yeah. All right. The first one we got is from Mr. Andrew. B. Malhin, sorry man if I'm mispronouncing that. <laughs> How does it feel, Tony, to have the biggest balls FM has never seen? Ah, oh, I'm not sure about this. Um, come at me, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah, man. Keep unleashing the fury from your loins. Bring on the competitive spirit. Definitely, definitely. We will back you up. Next is from Gurgosnu himself. Will there be any FW or float wheel demo days? Well, I think we covered that. And how is the testing yeah. of the new mods going? Oh, let me bring you my uh, GTV. This is the board I ride every day now. You can see it, it says <laughs> pine. <by Pine>. <laughs> <laughs> I put a pine sticker on it. And okay. uh, it's not good. The board I write every day now. Uh, it's got a GTV here, the GTV kit here, and it also got the GTS motor. I like how, so, is that just Sharpie that you drew the V on? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we need to do some, you know, stickers when we launch the GTV kit. No, keep it like that. I love how rustic it is. <laughs> uh, we will just send you a Sharpie. You can do the V yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I really like it because it's able to have this uh, similar kind of range with the ADV. So. Every time I go out to ride uh, with with John and uh, uh, the group, uh, I, I'm I will be able to keep up with them, and uh, it's also got a power, you know, especially when it, when I feed the GTS motor onto this, uh, it just feels 
as Turkey as the ADV, and um, okay. uh, yeah, I, I really like this platform now, and uh, everything just works uh, as expected. But now uh, I'm gonna test it for like 1,000 kilometers to uh, to be really sure about this um, before I send any uh, kit out there to testers. GT motor and GTS motor is totally different behavior on the on the right, uh, GTV right. kit. You don't have to rush and buy a GTS motor because there's some problem I'm uh, experiencing with the GTS motor. That is the hub being a uh, 6.5 inch. It's really, oh man, it's horrible. And there is very little uh, tire uh, for you to uh, uh, soak up the uh, shocks. Mm -hmm. And um, I think the really good way of uh, of uh, moving forward is that if you have a GT, you need to uh, get a GTV kit for like two, uh, 200, 300, and uh, you need to get a TFL five inch hub. Right. And uh, right. in that way, you know, the TFL's hub is gonna have the N50, N52 magnets, and it's gonna have the same torque as the GTS motor. But uh, you will be like spending half of the money to getting uh, the, this, the, the, this um, a five inch hub, and you are also solving a really big problem is that tire is not getting enough meat on there. And uh, with the TFL 5 inch, you're gonna get the same kind of torque as the GTS motor, and you're gonna get the same, uh, you're gonna get more tire, just basically. Basically getting a suspension for your wheel. Love to see you one day with a five inch hub. Let's do it with, with the lighter boy, with five inch as well. Next is Air, Airy Kition. Um plans on collaborating with TFL, especially on this newer board, um, and then also any plans of had, having a sort of writer's team? Uh, the first question, uh, TFL collaboration, and um, I think there is some legal uh, issues behind it, but uh, we are already getting uh, recommendations on our developing, like uh, Robert, uh, Robert is the engineer of TFL. He's responsible for developing products for TFL, and he's giving me a lot of lot of advice, like how you should make this. And people don't like it. People don't like it this way, and you need to make it this way. And uh, I'm getting like a very uh, useful advice on this already. So, uh, if we were ever to collaborate officially with TFL, I, I think there is only going to be, I think Jeff is definitely down with this, and I'm totally open with this idea, and actually, I think we, if we collaborate with TFL, it's going to be sell like hotcake, and um, there is only like one big reason, legal threat behind it, and uh, if we can solve it, we can do it. And uh, the second uh, question is plans on having a riders team? I don't know. I don't know how this works, man. I, I mean, Riders team is like a, a really new thing. Like, FM invented this uh, to promote their products. I think if we if we have, I think we already have a fleet of riders um, that's promoting Flowwheel already. And um, if you want to get paid, <laughs> I'm definitely open open to it. If you need support, if you need accessories, if you need everything, uh, we are gonna support you. And uh, as long as you write flow wheel and promoting this, and uh, I think that counts as a factory team, right? <laughs> Heck yeah. That would be a, a great way to have that competitive back and forth team sort of vibe. Yeah. That means yeah. there needs to be float wheel jerseys, float wheel merch, float wheel oh, shirts, float wheel, float wheel underwear, everything, man. <laughs> Definitely. Um, the merch. I get this. Uh, I, I get this a lot. Uh, people are want uh, people want us to, you know, launch our merch. And um, the thing is that we are just too busy to do do all the designs. You, you know, if you have to do some merch, you have to design it first, you, you, and you have to ask the factory to make it. Uh, but I think for the industry, it's more like you ask somebody to uh, print as demand. If somebody orders, uh, then they print a t-shirt and they ship it out for you. But I think that's not the way we do business. Is, is that I think the uh, I think I think we need to produce it, produce it if we want to sell it. <laughs> if anybody wants to make flow wheel t-shirts or merch, you can go ahead and do it. And um, there is not gonna be any trademark issues for you, because it's oh, all awesome. open. 
And if you want to make it, go make it. I will even buy one for myself. <laughs> <laughs> Because I、There、want one、go. too. You guys heard it. Hey, entrepreneurial opportunity to have Tony yeah, as your first customer. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. Start your、uh, merch. Yeah, start kicks- your, your merch. So this is from three people that I combined together: Rainy Cobra, Zan Man Seven O Seven, and Bleeds Blue Zero Five Escape. V2 Electronics and GT Conversion Kit release date. How soon can we order? Okay, so for the GTV kit, I think、uh, it's gonna be like starting of March, beginning of March. You can order it, and、uh, we are gonna send out the test kit. Uh, uh, we already have some test kit here, but we are missing the motor blocks. You know, it's the only thing that's missing for a GTV kit or any other kit. Uh, is waiting for that motor plug to be made, because we need to do a new injection tooling for it. And、um, for the、uh, flow wheel ADV two, it's gonna be end of March, I believe. Starting of,、okay. uh, yeah, end of March. Right around the corner. Higgs Boss and one two five. Any plans in the works for a new battery config such as P forty five or fifty S? And do you have some sort of release roadmap that could be published? For example, he said, could a future board have an ESC fitted into the Canon core, which you did touch upon? New better sales is that、um, if you are willing to give up some of the performance, you you can actually uh, uh, do away with 50s or P45b. I think it's possible, and um, but. Um, I think it's possible, but let's wait till later, and、uh, we will discuss this. And、uh, but currently, we only offer the P42A、uh, battery cells. But I think P45B and the 50S is also possible. Like, but we need to make some changes in the firmware of the LCM and stuff like that. It's possible. Okay. And possible. The Canon,、nice. And the、uh, ESC in Canon Core is 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 gonna happen. It's gonna happen uh, uh, sooner、Sweet. or later. Going to be pretty groundbreaking, so excited for that.、Um, do you have any? So that's pretty much it on the horizon that you can share in terms of a release roadmap. Yeah, basically. That's a lot to work on already. So、yeah. plenty to keep、uh, kind of work. keep your hands full. Yeah. Only a team of four too. So from Ice Huang, favorite boba. Favorite boba. Oh, I'm not sure if I can get it, but there's a brand like like Bao Zhu Gong in Chinese. I'm not sure if you can get this. <laughs> yeah, Never it's basically、oh. some、uh, made some modifications to Taiwan boba, and、um, it's basically a Chinese version of it. But it's like more、um, just milk tea and some boba inside it. Just the tradition. What makes it? What, where's the mod in it? What makes it unique? Hum. The Bao Zhu Gong's uh, philosophy uh, behind it is like we make it with like hundred percent natural stuff. Like we make it with only tea and milk. And、um, there's no、uh, harmful chemicals in it, and they also cook the boba themselves. Mr. Brad Swerve, curious about how Tony defines his image, and where he sees himself in five years. Freedom fighter, right to repair, open source, maverick, business disruptor, uh, quote, uh, or hustler, pure love of floating and power, etc. What does Tony think of Tony? That's some、uh, existential shit right there. I don't know, man. I feel like I'm just a clueless teenager. <laughs> I'm still finding my way out. Like you know, I still like. I don't have a clue, man. I I wish the flow wheel is able to grow into something like, like Xway or like King Song or something like that. But um, we are facing that big threat here, right? That's the only limiting factor. That's. Um, preventing us to get、uh, bigger and hiring people because we are worried. You know, if we're hire, hiring people,、uh, are they gonna keep the secrets of where we live or something like that? Like it's a big threat to us. Like if we can remove that threat, I think we are going to be really big, like King Song, like、uh, like every other UC companies and ESK companies. I really like the X Way is really like my dream kind of point being there. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Truly, mass market and multiple suppliers of the boards—they're just all、yeah. egging each other on in terms of innovation, like the EUC world. That's a big burden to carry, man. So, props to you. 
but know that you have a lot of support out here. Yeah, we have definitely have a lot of supporters out there, and uh, we really appreciate your support. Really nice point transitioning into EUC world. I'll jump to uh, Mr. Wheel Stop Stories question. How can we get to a place where EUCs are? Um, and then his follow-up question is, will drop-in kits make hypercores overheat? This was an issue with Little Fokker and hypercores. For the first questions, and uh, I think EUC right now, they are like rated for 10 kilowatts, right? And uh, currently, the flow wheel ADV with V1 electronics, they can do like 6.7 kilowatts for only a short amount of time. But with the V2 system out there, the you know the the uh, the power stage is going to be twice as beefy, and the uh, heat dissipation is going to be a lot better than the V1 system. And I believe that um, we are very close to uh, what the EUC is having right now because when you look at the S22 from Kingsong, when you look at at you know uh, some you know Leaper Kim products like they are all like we are very close we are very close uh, in terms of power but in, uh, for the one wheels or flow wheels to climb huge hills we need to solve the problem of the nose clearance right we need to have that kind of ultimate clearance for it to climb crazy like uh, the EUC does but we are very close mm -hmm. uh, hypercore is heating up. Um, I think TFL is developing some solution for it. You have the uh, what the co ones, and it's basically some uh, heat sink for added on the hypercore. But my personal, uh, I really want to experiment on like if we can uh, inject inject some kind of oil into the hub and make the hub uh, itself as a heat sink. I think it's going to benefit a lot, and um, I think. TFL will have some really awesome products uh, that solves this kind of problem. And uh, also with their higher gray magnets, it's going to lower the heat as well. Would you say you're more in favor of an oil-based or there's uh, the armachillos? I don't know if you heard of that. Mm -hmm. I'm not in favor of the static rate solution, which is like, right. uh, uh, which is like a ma magnetic, uh, magnetic fluid, like ferrous fluid, something. We actually started with this idea because a lot of people are saying, you know, it's a really good solution and it's not going to get dirty over time. But for my personal experience, we actually ditched this idea because in the launch video, you saw that we are we were originally going to put some a state of inside of our motor. But later we found out it's actually not good for the motor because sometimes there is an insulation point that's not good enough and, uh, you know, the, the state of is actually conducted. And uh, sometimes, sometimes the whole sensor gets damaged. I don't know why, but uh, I think it was the uh, static rate doing uh, something wrong or in there, causing some unwanted con conductivity. And uh, that's why we are more in favor of oil-based solutions. Like we want to add some oil seal on the axles and you know inject some oil inside it. Yeah, to to fill up the air gap. I think oil is always should be a more natural solution than with metals than uh, some sort of like a fluid. Yeah, because they're, they're, they're conductive. That, that really mm -hmm. gets under my nerve. We're almost through here. SD Mod 619. Will Tony provide super flux connector wiring options for GTV? He will sell way more mm -hmm. drop ins if he offers it for purchase options. I think for uh, super flux connectors, uh, we are actually, uh, the Superflux connector is actually uh, open source and we can source it with our suppliers. And um, if there is ever a need, I think we are going to do it. But I think for GTV, the best solution is that uh, putting, just putting a TFL 5 inch hub over it. Uh, because you know, the Superflux is a 6 inch motor. And uh, a lot of people don't know is that Superflux is actually a even heavier than the Canon core. So I, as far as I remember, the, the Canon core was like 1.75 kilograms heavier than the stock FM wheels. Okay, we have some. It, it, oh. I think we ran out on the one hour mark. Just have to restart this, give me one second. Oh.
Yeah, sorry, on a budget here, on the free trial. <laughs> super flux. Yeah, the super flux, probably not until you see a real need. Yeah, probably not until I see a real need because, you know, the uh, the cannon core is already heavier than the hyper core, right? Like uh, 1.75 kilograms heavier than the uh, hyper core. Mm -hmm. So the, oh, let me see, the super flux, people, a lot of people don't realize it. The super flux is actually 1.9 kilograms heavier than the cannon core. So you'll be adding a lot of weight if you are doing a GTB. The GT platform mm -hmm. is already heavy as fuck. Because and you are adding you you are adding a super flux on top of that. I don't think it's a really good uh, option for it. But I think the really um, economical and the logical solution for it is just the original uh, core of the hypercore GT core with a TFL's five inch hub. I think that would be ideal. Like it's gonna be light and uh, it's gonna be. Powerful enough, you know, and powerful, yeah. way more powerful than a GTS. Yeah, and that could be yeah. the better uh, Vesk or DIY Vesk uh, trick option too. Is yes. Aside from hypercore, but you still get more power uh, without the extra weight of something like yes, Super yes, that's the idea here. Waterproofing by Nickel Minsky, and is V two BMS still going to be plug and play? Oh, waterproofing is that. Um... We are trying to improve only uh, the motor connection. We are trying to, you, you know, we are still experimenting on the new motor plug, on a new motor plug. And uh, actually the tooling of the V2's motor plug is, has just been started. Yes, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be uh, plug and play and everything. You, you just have to open it up and plug a uh, plug, few plugs, and that's it. A few screws, a few plugs, that's it. All right, Floating Canada and Glenora FA. Open up for dealers outside of U.S., especially in Europe. Europe, I think, is a, a great market for you, by the way. There's a lot of adopters of uh, float wheel out there. Our business model, first of all, we did not account for the dealer's uh, cost. So first of all, you know, for other UC companies, um, it's usually uh, you pay like 3000 for a S22 from Kingston, uh, for a Kingston S22, right? And the thing is that it came out of the factory for only one thousand U.S. dollars, so the dealer will be taking two thousand dollars off the MSRP. So, I don't think there is enough uh, room for a dealer's profit right now in the flow wheel situation here. And uh, I'm open open to this idea, but I'm really worried if you start selling openly, you know, use, using PayPal, using uh, credit card, or something, using cash, or even cash. You, you, you can get sued, you know, from the uh, the threat we are having right now. But um, if you are going to use cryptocurrency, why don't you just go to Flowio and order one? <laughs> it just doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Yeah, that's true, because you just you ship everywhere, right? Yes, we ship everywhere. Uh, basically everywhere. Yeah, that's actually a great uh, way. Just order from you directly, and that keeps the prices lower too yeah if you're gonna do a dealer prices the price is gonna up for a few hundred dollars and 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 i think at that point it's just not good for everybody yeah well we do see that there is money in the market especially with the gts so could be room to <laughs> play around there in the future okay, we'll, we'll okay. Have to see. oh i do have a one fun thing for you i think you have a doppelganger my girlfriend miri she told me that did you know tony really looks like danny flo Danny Flo, who's Danny Flo? Look up Danny Flo. Let me see. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, the hairstyle is kind of similar, <laughs> and we are uh, we are kind of same chubby here. <laughs> I see. You got the glasses going, and it's a good look, man. Oh, thanks a lot for it. But um, I think I'm over the age of listening to rap music, you know. To be a big fan of MC Hot Dog, uh, you know, also from Taiwan, you know. I'm Taiwanese, so I should know this, but I've never heard yeah, of him. Yeah, should know this. And yeah, no, I'll have to catch up on my music heritage. <laughs> no, but don't take that as an insult. Danny Flo is such a cool guy. And he, yeah, he, I get it. 
he has a wife and he has a girlfriend. They all have this polyamory thing going on together. So what? that could be your uh, doppelganger is um, the celebrity lookalike that everybody has. Doppelganger, okay. A famous version of yourself. Danny Flo, man. Yeah, I'm gonna check him out later. Dude, thank you so much again for the time. This was so enlightening, and I think a lot of people are gonna have uh, find so much value getting to know you, Tony, from as the um, the personal side of you, along with your business ambitions. It's been awesome seeing your journey to this point so far, despite all the struggles you've been going through. The fact that yeah. you're still bringing an amazing product and still not just a one-hit wonder, you're still thinking about revolutionary uh, upgrades and future products and seeking the advice from the community. Keep at it. Let us know what help you need. Um, go fund me for any projects you have, you know, so just huh. let us know, man. But I'll leave you with the, yeah. the last word and, and give the mic to you. Okay. Thanks a lot, Max, for ho hosting me. And um, I I've been wanting to do this kind of uh, video uh, for a long time, but <laughs> I just don't have the opportunity. But now you ask, it's really a good way to show people our background, where we started, and uh, we should do it more often. You know, later when we have some new product, we should gather together, do some analysis videos together, do some podcasts together, and uh, get all nerdy on this. And uh, thanks a lot, Max, for uh, hosting me again. And um, thanks a lot for the community to support us. And uh, I, I don't think we need a GoFundMe situation here. And um, I think most of the GoFundMe is a scam. But uh, I think we will find a sustainable uh, business model to keep uh, pushing for innovation and uh, supporting the platform, uh, supporting the community uh, all together. And uh, thanks for thanks for. Uh, tuning in if you are watching this video and uh, subscribe to uh, Max for more video like this. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate it, man. And much love to everybody who stayed to this point. Drop a comment if you've uh, heard us up until the end. Love the idea of some sort of like uh, quarterly or annual sort of check-in or just whenever there's a special announcement going on. Would love to... Yeah. Um, you know, compile all the information together. It's probably better than like just responding to each of the comments individually. I see yeah. you get a lot of those. So thanks again. And uh, yes, stay tuned for more. Subscribe to the channel. Subscribe to Tony's uh, YouTube channel as well. Uh, float Wheels, yes. Float Wheels with an S dot R-U. And uh, I'll make sure to put his email address on there. Dude, guys, get an ADV. Just snag one or two. It's so amazing. Like, it's the board. I exactly. honestly... I, what are you waiting for? The smoothness, the power is unmatched and for a super fair price that you cannot beat. And everything's sourced for you. And then you have your Gen 2 come in, your continued improvements. The quick story I'll drop on the right to repair. You have the backing of... An amazing person with customer service. I had an issue with the cable harness that it was a freak accident. It wasn't, it was a rock getting stuck because I was doing something stupid. Don't no slide Sorry, on. Your ass. Sorry. <laughs> Ooh. Yo. Don't no slide on railroad tracks with the rocks around, okay? That was my mistake, but I hit up Tony. He was so amazing to back me up. Um, and sent out the replacement parts. Unfortunately, everything got But just to be safe, he sent a replacement of essentially an entire new board. So uh, much love and thank you for that. It actually wasn't even mine. It was uh, uh, Eamon, one of your... Oh. Yeah, he, he's well, the one of the first ones who got the ADVs. The best way to support, go get a ADV and stay tuned for the new products coming out. Have a great day. We'll be in touch, Tony. Ciao.